Hi, I'm Georgia. And I'm Renee, and welcome to Zen and Tech, where we try to help you center your inner geek and live a better, more connected life. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, and online store. For a free trial and 10% off, visit squarespace.com slash zen and enter offer code zen, Z-E-N, at checkout. A better web starts with your website. Georgia, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Renee? I'm doing very well, thank you. Except it's like 100. This is Canada, and it's 100 degrees in my studio. You know, that's like 24 or something Canadian. <laughs> you were complaining about the colds. They gave you heat. You're complaining about the heat. Yeah, I think they're trying to get me to go outside so they can freeze me again. I'm not going to fall for it this time. So you're going to stay inside? I just want nice weather for a few minutes. Is that too much to ask? 100 degrees is nice weather. No, no. 100 degrees is poaching weather. <laughs> it's boiling water today. weather. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Georgia, what is the topic for today? What are we getting? We are taking a look at the way that we use tech and other things to help us live a more zen, easy, effortless life. And we buy so much tech, I uh, figured that we should show off and share a little bit about our favorite stuff to make our lives a little better. So these are a few of our favorite things? A few of our favorite things. That sounds oh. like a song. Break into song, Renee. We've done gift guides before. We've done New Year's things before. What makes this different? What makes these things different than just a suggestion of stuff that people should buy? Well, these are just the things that we enjoy that make our lives a little bit easier, a little bit more simplistic, or a little bit more happy. If you're choosing to spend your money, we're going to give you a little bit of a heads up on stuff that we enjoy, and then you can share with us the stuff that you enjoy and suggestions and things that might make life a little bit easier and give you a little bit more free time. Now, what would you say to people, I'm going to play devil's advocate here, who say Please. that this is materialistic, that you shouldn't be doting on things, that you, know, that you shouldn't be looking to technology to make your life better? Well, it's funny since you're watching a podcast right now, so already you must like some sort of tech. And I think that there is something to living a very simplistic life. But if you're going to spend your money on something, you might as well spend it on things that are already tried and true and trusted. So we're going to go through the stuff that we really liked and found to make our lives easier so that if you spend your heart in cash, you don't have to make the same mistakes that we did to find the stuff that we like a lot. None of my things are going to be mistakes, I hope. Well, yeah, you know, sometimes they are, like my, my Kruger case thing that, you know. All right, so go ahead, Georgia, start us off. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to um, deal with is a real simple one and then we'll get into some of the more techy ones later. So um, I got the you guard me the little stickers for the back of my phone uh, which you know are they're cute they're nice I've actually dropped my phone a few times and they it hasn't cracked as of yet um, which are nice but again these might help some people and might not help others but the cool thing... Sorry, for people who are just listening and not watching could you describe it a little bit? Ah sorry these are little tiny sticker add-ons that you put to the back or, and these ones also have little front plates, and they're sticky stickers, but they're um, three-dimensional, they're clear. They're they puffy? Stand, they're a little bit puffy, and they're a little bit ad ad adhesive, so if you put it onto something glass, it's gonna st your phone's going to stay in one place. So every time I put it on something glass, I kind of have to peel my phone off. So it's so like sticky it's, or something. Yeah, it's a little bit sticky. It has a little bit of, like... Tack tacked to it. Not much, not that you'd actually feel it, it just feels like plastic, but when you put it onto a glass, it's kind of going to hold your phone there. So when I use my phone in the bathtub, which is, I know, already not a really smart move, it'll keep my phone exactly in place on the side of my bathtub, which is really cool, but that's not what I like about it. It's not why I kept on using it, because I have 100,000 cases, as you probably already know. I used it, I got it because of this, and this is why this is still on my phone. What is that? Now, it looks this here like the was head of an alien. It looks like the head of an alien with the little eyes. Here we go. That would be it. There we go. With the little tiny alien eyes over here. This is the shape of an alien head, and this you can stick anywhere else, and then your phone will stick there. So ah. this is a little you guard me patch that goes with the back of the you guard me adhesive, and when you put them together, it will stick in place anywhere. Now. I use this in my car. So when I am lost and I'm looking, I'm using my Google Maps or my Apple Maps or whatever maps you choose to use in hopes of not getting lost. This keeps, I put it right onto my steering wheel so that I don't have to look up and then down. 
and risk injury or an accident and it's really easy to take on and take off. I don't like the little holders that are on. I don't mind the little holders that are on the side of the car, but this one's really cool because you can place it. I'm going to try it on the wall and I'll see where How does it stick? Is that a sticker on the back of that too? It's adhesive, yeah. And I've okay. actually, you can see on the back that it's got a little circle from my steering wheel um, that I put it on. And so you can just place it on anything. Let me just see here. I'm going to place it on the wall here. Ha oh, ha. I might risk. We'll see if this actually sticks. And then, so it sticks into place. Oh, it'll be great then, either, either way. Pardon me? It'll be great either way. <laughs> it will. And then all you do is you place your phone on it. And then your phone stays in place exactly what it is. It's really easy to take off. So for people who are listening, you basically stuck the sticker on your wall, then put your phone on the sticker, and it is stuck there like Spider-Man. Like Spider-Man. And they have some also for iPads as well. Now, I haven't tried the iPad ones of the YouGuard Me stickers for like putting it on the wall or somewhere else. But it's it's really nice, and I love it for my car because I can just take my phone. If I'm making a phone a phone call hands free, I can see if someone else is messaging me without having to look in between. Now, again, I don't know about the legality, but depending on where you live, you want to check that out. Don't say Georgia told me this was. But it okay. does make it a hands free option. It makes it a hands free op option. It's really nice because they work together so nicely and so I use that on my steering wheel. I peeled it off my steering wheel. <laughs> Hopefully it'll come off the wall without having to take a piece of my wall away with it. But I find it so nice to have. Um, I can check out my maps without looking far from where I am, make it really quick change, listen very easily. Uh, the only thing is that if you do knock it, like it does fall off if you give it a little bit of a knock so you still want to be careful while you're driving. But I love it. I love it. I think it's pretty awesome. And like you said, you could theoretically get several of those little bits and put one in your car, one in your kitchen so you could cook hands-free, yep. one in the bathroom, one in all, all, all sorts of places. Yeah, you can. They have iPad versions as well. And you can also just take this adhesive and one second. Here we go. Oh, this, will be, this will be fun, Renee. Okay. So you can actually take this adhesive. You recognize the case, Renee? Yes. Just show everyone else this is case that destroyed it. You can put the adhesive on the back of whatever case you actually like to use. And then you can also use it so that you can go around with it and put it anywhere you want. So you can also use it with a case. It you can put it straight on your phone. Anymore. You can put it on a case. I've also seen other varieties that don't cover the entire back of your phone. So if you have a phone that's not as popular, that doesn't have a ready-made cutout, you can still get largest shapes that you can put on it and then use a similar or the same. Yeah, you can just cut these. You got these in any size or shape that you so wish as well. Like you can buy them ready made, but you know, do it yourself. Get grab some scissors if you know, just buy one, cut it into whatever it might be, and then you can stick it on. Let's see if this comes off. My now I'm going to ask the question that everyone is thinking at home: Does it stick to pocket lint? Did you take it out of your pants, and is it just covered in pocket lint because of the stickiness? Oh, look at that! Sorry, wait, wait. Oh, it did. It took off a little bit. I got a little bit of wall damage here. Oh, All right, oh, sad. I'll survive. It does stick a little bit to pocket lint. A little little bit of schmutz is on okay. the backing. I'm assuming you can wipe that off. You just wipe it off. It's not a lot. All right. Very nice. So that's, that's, that's my first one. Kicking it my off. First one? What's yours, Renee? So I have got here a large power charger. And I know what you're thinking. You don't want a large power charger. You want something small and svelte that... Uh, you know, you can actually attach to your phone or carry easily in a pocket, maybe. But there is a huge advantage to having a ton of power. More power sometimes is just more power. Now, How this much is power the, does that have? This is the Mophie um, Power Station Duo. And what I like about this is it's got dual USB ports in it. And this can charge a normal phone twice. So like, I get about 10 hours of battery life on my phone. But, you know, it, if I'm out and about, I was at a conference this weekend, and a conference is the worst place because you're always using your phone. You're never putting it into charge because you're not driving, you're not at home. You're just constantly staying in contact with your phone, so it wears down. Plug it into this, it will charge up again. If you're out really, really late, as I am sometimes out really, really late, you can charge it up a second time. If a friend of yours, you know, uh, a friend or a colleague is running out of power, you can plug in their phone too. You do have to bring your own cable because some phones use lightning cable, some phones use dock cable, some phones use micro USB, some use other sorts of proprietary cables. But the back end here is just USB 2.0. Uh, it's also got a micro USB so you can charge the power station. 
it's bulky, uh, it's heavy, you could throw it at somebody and do some damage, but if you are running out of power on your phone <laughs> and your phone is your lifeline, uh, this will give that lifeline back to you. I like that. And, and does it take a long time to charge and how long does it hold its charge? Uh, it holds its charge for a very long time. I've picked these up after months and they still, this one's only got one left because I've been using it. It's got a light that shows you one, two, three, or four dots uh, depending on, for people who are listening, it's about the size of, I don't know, an old, an old style phone. It's maybe four and a half inches diagonal and about three quarters of an inch thick. So it is a block. Um, but it charges, I charged it overnight, so I'm not exactly sure. It is holding twice the charge of a typical phone, so it does take a while. I just plug it in overnight. Uh, but it, I've picked it up weeks after I've charged it, and it's still been full. I picked it up, I think, months after I've charged it, and it's still been at three, you know, 20, 75% of charge. Uh, and and it's, will, it, will it charge, like, how many, like, say, uh, MacBook Pros would it charge? Like, half zero. a MacBook Pro? It will Pro? Charge, charge zero MacBook Pros. Okay, it is only made so, for phones and tablets. USB only. Uh, it is only made, USB it is not only. A, it is not an AC power adapter. There are okay. stuff like that. If that is what you want, um, HyperMac and other companies actually make uh, batteries that you can plug in uh, a PC or a Mac to and provide additional charge. Those are m typically much bigger, though, and much higher capacity. Uh, I haven't used one of those. I know some people travel with them. For me, the whole point of having a laptop now, and my laptop lasts 12 hours on a typical charge, uh, so I haven't run into a case where I do need it. But, you know, that's a good point. If, if your power needs are not only a mobile device but are a laptop too, you can investigate that. But I would suggest you switch to, you know, ta most tablets now get 10 hours of battery life, and most tablets are really good for traveling, especially if you have... Uh, like we've seen before, those Bluetooth keyboards, which function as a case as well. Microsoft Surface comes with them. You can get them for other tablets, like the iPad from Logitech. Uh, those those can make them into an e into a fairly good traveling laptop-like device. Hmm. So I I do recommend though because there's nothing, and you've experienced this, Georgia. You've, like when your I'm phone always, is about to run out, it, it you just start panicking. Is, my phone died. I I wish I had that here so I could use it to charge my phone right now. Yeah, so you have no have idea no if someone's left. tweeting you, messaging you. You have no have idea no if idea. an email is coming in, if a voicemail. You see, you're just cut off now. It's horrible. I feel cut off. It's a little bit stressful to be cut off from your tech, and there's nothing you can do about it. The worst part is I have a power adapter right now, but there's no plugs that are usable. So if you're traveling, um, and again, a smart tip is to bring a power adapter with you because everyone would love you because they can plug in all of their tech. But if you're traveling, you never know where you're going to be. You don't know if there's going to be any charge. Or you don't know if uh, suddenly your plane's going to be delayed or you're not going to be able to get in wherever you have to and you might be running low. So it's nice. And that one's not too big to, to carry around with you. You can fit it in a pocket or in your purse pretty easily. Yeah, it's a little bit heavy, but just like your your sticky case lets you put your phone on your car and not have to worry about holding it. It makes your life easier. Having this with me, whether it's in my laptop bag or it's in my jacket pocket, uh, it just it means I don't have to worry about running out of power, and that just makes me so much less stressed. Unless we get on with enjoying my day and not panicking about where I'm going to get my you know where I'm going to get my next fix of electricity. Yes, yes, which we really do need. We rely on now. Yeah, absolutely. What's hey, next, you, Georgia? You want you want to hear my next one? Yes. So I was late at night and I was surfing on Reddit and it was a dentist thread and they're all talking about, you know, the question was what is the best toothpaste? But they ended up going on to that toothpaste does not really matter as long as it has uh, fluoride and some other Minty ingredients. Good flavor. Exactly. They said that the toothbrush really does make a huge difference to how clean your teeth are and that does matter to me. I like to have clean teeth. I hate the feeling of, of having film plaque build up on my teeth. It bothers me a lot. And everyone was raving about this one uh, electric toothbrush. I'm not really into electric toothbrushes. I never thought that they would be good, but the amount of raves from dentists got me really interested. And so I said, you know what? This matters to me. We have to care for our teeth for life. They also help keep, you know, if your teeth are clean, it keeps your breath smelling nice. And, uh, you know, if you brush off the plaque, that's the acid that eats away at your teeth. So it's really important. So I went ahead and spent, I think it was $199 wow. on a, I know, a dual set toothbrush. And this is the one that everyone recommended. One what does a dual set mean? It has two uh, toothbrush heads on it. Okay. Sorry. And so here we have, it's the Philips Sonicare. I'm just going to lift it up a little bit. Sorry, let There's me no move brush that. on that. Wait, wait, I'll show you all. I'll show you 
<laughs> so that looks, for people who are listening, that looks like a phaser from Star Trek The Next Generation. It looks like a phaser. Um, and the tooth, I'll show you how cute it is. The toothbrush, I'll just move that a little touch. So the toothbrush sits inside here. It's very futuristic looking. You take out your toothbrush head. There's two sizes that this one has and the Those other. big and small teeth. Yes, exactly. I use the tiny one. You place it on top, and then you can set what you want it to be here. It could be on clean. When you start off, these are really distressing when you first start using them. Exceptionally distressing. Why? It tickles and itches, and it's bothersome, like really, really bad. So the first time I used it, I was laughing the whole time, and it was really difficult to use. And they said, like, wait, within, uh, I think it was six or seven tries, it's not going to bother you anymore. And I thought, there's no way. This is going to tickle my gums so much, I'm going to be bothered the entire time. But it didn't. So I'm going to show you how it works. The bristles, when you turn it on, they rub back and forth, and it goes over your teeth, and because it's just so minute, it completely brushes away all the plaque and the coolest part is that when I wake up in the morning there's still no plaque on my teeth it's the best clean besides a dental hygienist doing your teeth and then doing the little uh, fluoride scrub kind of thing where you get to take choose your flavors tutti mm -hmm. frutti is always a good one um, so here I'm gonna I'm gonna use it because why not so you turn it on and it makes a small noise little hum and then you just it, it, and it, it'll stop so that you know when you should stop and you just kind of, you don't have to move it at all. So is, I'm, I, I've used an electric toothbrush before, like an Oral-B electric toothbrush. Is it different than that? I'm not sure about the Oral-B. I know that this one ranks higher. So like the other one, just, it um, just spins. The bristles spin like at a no, dentist's office. No, this does not. The bristles do not spin at all, if you can okay. see on my finger. So it's shooting like Wait, sound waves at you? It's it's not actually it's it's movement it's it says Sonicare okay. but it's not really but they're just moving so little that you can barely feel it and then it pauses so that you know and you should like just you just move it along your feet re, your teeth really really slowly and it's it's an amazing amazing clean you have different things you can do gum care uh, you know you know cleaning for your tongue on it. it I have to say it works really well and the cool part is that usually you you know leave your toothbrush afterwards and it's all kind of gunky and it's moist and you put it away but this one when you put your toothbrush away and then close it it uses UV light to disinfect your toothbrush as you can tell it and it'll work for about 10 minutes see oh, so I was wondering why you stored the top separately yeah and then you see it's it's actually going to be cleaning it with UV light for 10 minutes so that all of the bacteria is going to be off of your toothbrush by the time that you are done. And I I do have to say my teeth have never been cleaner. You still have to floss. It does not take the place of flossing. It doesn't get between the teeth. But it does a really nice job of cleaning. And I'm, it's one of those buys that I was happy that I did it. So, But there, there is no sonic flosser? That's disappointing. There probably is. There probably is, um, but uh, I'm not using it. Let me know. <laughs> Should I be? I used to use a water pick. I used to love to use the little tiny water picks. You'd put them in. They had a little water dish, and it was just a little tiny jet, like a water gun of water, and it would clean between your teeth really well. And if you let it go, it just went crazy, and there was like water all over <laughs> your bathroom. And I used to love that, but I don't know. I, I use regular floss now, like a string. So Georgia said, let us know. We have a brand new email address. We have Zen and Tech, Z E N A N D T E C H at mobilenations.com because people were saying there wasn't an easy way to email us. So that goes to both Georgia and me. So if Great. you do know of a sonic uh, um, flosser, sorry, flosser, yes, if you do know of a sonic flosser, you can just email us and tell us, and then Georgia will buy it and try it not to kill anybody and see if it works. <laughs> try not to. <laughs> so I have something else, Georgia. Okay. So you were talking about something that cleans your teeth. Well, I have something that makes them unclean again. Tell me. So this is an AeroPress. Mm -hmm. So take a coffee cup. Actually, I'll show you how this works. Um, I didn't bring a filter with me, but we'll, I we'll... do. I have everything. Do you want me to show? Uh, okay. Yeah. You go ahead and show. I, I saw one of your things. I actually brought all of it to show everyone. So this. Here we go. Renee. Renee, you're the one who 
you can talk about it. Oh, we can't do that, eh? All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll tag team. So I, okay. what you do is you put a filter into this little part here, and then you close it up. Okay, you wait a second. Let me, let me show that. Okay, so this is the little bot. Yeah. This is the tiny filter that they come with. Put it out to the bottom. Filter it in. Just squeeze. Good. Okay. Yeah, now you will see there are numbers on the side of this thing. One, two, three, four. I don't know why the uh, the one and three are there because I've never found anyone who uses them. But the idea is, you grind coffee. You get good coffee, good roasted, you know, freshly roasted coffee. You grind it yourself because you have to be really pretentious about this. And then you fill it up. For one cup, you go to two. For for um, two cups, you go to four. You fill that up with uh, coffee grounds. Then you put the plunger on top. You put okay, the whole so let's, let's 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 take a peek at this. Okay, so here we go. I put my grinds yes. into the bottom. Then I take my cup. Actually, no, sorry, I, I misrepresented it. You don't put that much coffee in. You put two scoops for one cup, four scoops for um, two cups. Okay, I might have used too much, but, well, you know, whatever it might be. Okay, wait, let me get my cup here. Here's my cup. I already put sugar in it. Georgia. I know. Well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this right. Okay, you put your hot water inside. One second, let me. Now, for one cup, you're going to fill it up to the number two. That's where the number is coming in. And for two cups, you're going to fill it up to the number four. Okay. And then... You put it down on top of your cup. Like so. Okay. And then you're going to stir. Well, you're going to stir it before you put the plunger. In, actually, you're going to stir it for ten seconds. They give you a little stir thingy. Making a little bit of a mess here. I figured. <laughs> okay, I'm making a mess, but whatever it might be. Okay. So after so yeah, you stir, stir it, it for ten seconds. That's just to make sure all the water gets through all the grounds. Okay. There we go. Now, why is this better than regular coffee, Renee? So I mean, the coffee it's so. I wouldn't say it's better than regular. So the result is better than regular coffee. The thing it's the thing about the AeroPress. It was originally developed by the guys who at uh, I believe it's Floby is the right name. Um, is this Floby? No, the people that do the no. hair thing. No, free fa I Aero, Aero or something. Aerobi, that's it. Aerobi, and they made a frisbee that would go forever. It would go for several football fields. Uh, and they were also coffee aficionados. The inventor was a coffee aficionado, and he spent years. He was using AeroPresses. He was using espresso machines, he was using um, pour over methods and he just wanted something that made really good coffee, almost espresso like coffee but was had got sort of the ease of use of a French press. So he decided to use this because it creates sort of an air pressure, it uses air pressure to push the coffee through the grounds. What do you got there Georgia? So here we go, I have it, I'm gonna, this is the little press part and the cool part is that it works kind of like a bottom in that you get the full infusion of the coffee grinds but then you, like the problem when I used the bottom was that like all the, the grit came out and it became very, it was kind of a bitter, gritty but tasty, very well infused coffee and because they use the filter I don't find that at all so I'm just gonna, wait let me get the plunger baby here. You push down for about 20 seconds. And George okay, is right. I mean, because there's a paper filter, it, it removes far more of the granules. It makes a much smoother cup. And also it removes, I think, a lot of the a little bit of the oils, a little bit of the acidity from the coffee. So it makes for a very smooth extraction. Okay, so there we go. I have my coffee. Now it's good. It, what comes out of the bottom is going to be something like an espresso. It's not exactly an espresso because it's not using as much air pressure as an espresso machine, but it's a very short, very strong coffee. So most people who are used to regular coffee are going to make something like an americano by adding more water to the cup to sort of fill it up to the top. Right, and depending on how many grinds that you kind of use. So uh, at the end, you end up with a, in, in my opinion, a real. If you start off with really good, really fresh beans, you grind them yourself, you put them in there, you will end up with a fabulous, just an absolutely fabulous cup of coffee. I like cappuccino though. So I mean, you can you can theoretically, you'd have to, if you want to make real cappuccino or or real latte, you'd have to get sort of the, one of the the same thing used with an espresso machine, something that would make the that would steam the milk. Okay, well, I, I'm going to use the Bodum Little Milk Frother because I, when I make my cup, I, I make my little milk frother. So here it is. Here's my little Bodum guy. If I was going to do this, I was going to make it the way that I like it. You pour the milk to the bottom, heat it up in the microwave till it's really hot. This is better to use 
whole milk. If you want it to be really frothy and thick, use whole milk. The scale milk is healthier, but it is not as much fun. Now this is going to be froth. There we go. Yeah, okay. so this is basically injecting a lot of air into the milk. Okay, this is going to be such a mess on my desk. I totally didn't think of this. <laughs> and then, la la la. Oh god, this does look good though. And now I have a delicious and beautiful cappuccino. There we go. Very Enjoy. nice. So the reason I like the AeroPress so much is that I have absolutely no patience. I like good coffee. I, I do not have the skill to operate an espresso machine. I don't have the patience to wait for an extraction method where you're standing the there. What's expense? And... A real espresso machine is so expensive. No, the no, I, I don't care about that. I, I, I really care about time. And no, and like a pour over method is great, but you have to stand there for pouring for so long that I would just, you know, I, I would probably drink worse coffee to save myself the time. But this really, you grind the beans, you pour it in, there's a little bit of setup, but there's 10 seconds of stirring, 20 seconds of pushing, and you are done. Some people do a wacky, like, a wacky upside down extraction method where you basically steep it for a while before you uh, extract it. I don't bother with that. I just want really good coffee really fast. And to me, this is the best of many worlds. It does work exceptionally well, really, really quickly. So, and it makes it fast. The only thing is, I like, I don't find that you can make for a huge group of people. Screw like them. You need to buy two. Screw them. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> when I have coffee, you can have tea. No, that's true. You can make with the, with a normal bottom. You can make about two cups at a time. You know, some people use um, pour over methods to make lar larger pops, uh, larger cups of coffee. Uh, again, I I don't make coffee for enough people that I ever have to worry about that. So the AeroPress is a good thing for me. You can also get multiple AeroPresses if you really wanted to do it that badly. That's true. That's true. They're 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 so affordable. You probably could, and I do love the coffee. Um, my husband doesn't like coffee, and he loves this coffee. Well, you're basically so, making a dessert right there. That's, that's, that's I do, I do. I put a whole bunch of sugar at the bottom, and then I, I like the whipped cream and a little bit of, of the chocolate powder on top. But it's really tasty, so... Yeah, and the thing I like about it is it's not just um, making coffee. It becomes an experience because fresh beans smell terrific. Fresh ground beans are terrific. When you're extracting them this way, the whole experience is just sensorily marvelous. But you don't buy, like I'm using like just the over-the-counter bought kind of, I, you're probably scoffing at me. You buy like specialty beans. I'm not an animal, Georgia. <laughs> Just call me an animal. Yeah, I have a subscription, so I get fresh roasted beans every two weeks, and it's completely decadent. But I don't drink a lot of coffee. I drink maybe one cup of coffee a day, um, and it, it's cheaper overall than buying a fancy uh, espresso-based beverage at your local coffee shop. You know, every day. That's or true. Day. You're absolutely right. You're saving a lot of money. It seems like it's very. Um, let's see. Um, Hoity? I don't know if there's another word for it, but really you're saving yourself money because you can make really exceptionally good coffee um, and you get a different variety all the time, which is nice. So can I tell you about one other thing that's amazing? Okay, tell me. So this is our sponsor, Squarespace Georgia. It is an all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, and online store. I told this already. What I haven't told you is why. And again, I, I was a web developer. My early career, I developed websites for small and large companies, some international companies, and I did it in Notepad. I did it oh, dear, in yeah. Corel Paint. I eventually did it in Photoshop and with web development kits, but I was there at the very beginning, and I was there when people who couldn't do the kind of work I did took it upon themselves to use the GeoCities, to use the MySpaces, and to make horrendous atrocities that should not have been viewed by any man, woman, or child on the internet. <laughs> so how does bad. this make it easier? So this... So what is so great about this is you just go there. You don't have to use a credit card. You don't have to... Um, do anything. You don't have to give them any information at first. You can just sign in and start making a website. And if you can code, if you can design, that's great. You can do a lot of custom stuff. But if not, you can just use one of their pre-prepared templates. They have a bunch of really amazing designs. You go through, you find one you like, and these are modern websites. They're responsive websites. They're websites that look great on computers, on tablets, on phones. They are things that take a lot of time and effort for I, coding I'm teams pretty, to make. I'm pretty web illiterate. Could I make a website as well? You can 
can. I mean, if you can basically use pages or Word or and if you can click yourself around a website, if you could make your social media page on, on a network, you can make this. You can just drag and drop stuff. And if you have any trouble, they have 24-7 support through live chat and email. Uh, they're located in New York City. They're located in Dublin. You will call them. You will get a real person, and they will help you. Um, the plan started just $8 a month. They include a free domain name if you sign up for a year. They have higher level plans. They have plans that include you know, e-commerce so that you can start your own store if you wanted to sell something. You don't have to go and look for a random, you, know, you don't have to look for every separate part and try and bolt it together. Uh, it's fairly fabulous. You know the best part of this? Tell me. If you go right now, you can do a free trial and 10% off just by visiting squarespace.com slash zen and entering the offer code zen, Z-E-N, at checkout. Uh, so again, you can start off for free, give it a test drive, see if you like it. If and when you decide to make it your own, you just sign up, you use the code Z-E-N, and you get 10% off your sign up. Uh, it is... It is a fabulous way. It has made the web accessible to far more people than it previously was in a tasteful, in an excellent, and they just don't go down. They're built to scale. If you have a major you know, website linking to you, you'll just laugh it off. It'll be just fine. And I really appreciate that they've done this because it was so hard for a person to get a really high value website on the internet and now it is just so easy. Oh, that's great. So thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring the show. One last mm -hmm. time, that is squarespace.com slash zen and offer code Z-E-N. Very cool. So I have something else, and this one might be a, a little bit strange, but I love this. This is my one of my favorite things. Um, when we did CS in Vegas, I experienced a heated toilet seat, and I live in Canada, so toilet seats are freezing cold. Freezing, freezing cold, a little bit of a shock in the middle of that's the night. That's how you wake up in the morning, Georgia. I, that's not the way I want to wake up in the morning. So I went online and purchased a uh, heated toilet seat. This is amazing. It's amazing. It is. I love it. I just love it. It's, it's actually a shock if I have to use a bathroom anywhere else now. But it's fabulous. It is a heated toilet seat. It's about a hundred and something dollars, so really affordable. It sits on a regular toilet, has a little blue nightlight, so you can always, you're not going to miss, and for women, that's nice, and you'll also know if the seat is down. Plus, that jarring sound when you slam the seat closed. Yes, I will say it, Renee. It has a slow close, so <laughs> it'll just, the, both the seats and the cover will just slow down and close softly without any noise and sound. So if you have children or a man in the house, women are usually better at this, more delicate, because we don't lift the seat unless we're cleaning it. And it's amazing. It has heat settings. I always keep mine on as warm as possible. And it will keep your tukus nice and warm when you are using the bathroom. It, it seems silly, but well, it's... Hold on. How, let me ask, how is it doing this? Like, I mean, is it electrical? Is it, is it harnessing the power of the sun? What is going on here? <laughs> it's harnessing the... Um, it's a plug. You plug it in. Okay, so you have to have um, a power outlet somewhere in the bathroom. Long, yeah, you need to have it. It's a short, the cord is not very long, so that's the only thing. You, I think that it's about five to six feet. You cannot, you would have to use an extension if it is further, and you wouldn't want this to be, like, you know, you wouldn't want your extension to be really close to a water source besides the toilet itself, but it's, it's really fabulous. It's so well worth it. Out of everything... It is one of my most favorite things, and uh, it was funny because the power went out the other day, and so the toilet seat was freezing cold because I hadn't turned it back on. You can turn the nightlight on and off, and you can turn the so toilet seat on or off to be warm. And it was a little bit of a shock because I was expecting some you know, warm, happy toilet seat, and it was not. And they're easy to clean. So I was gonna make fun of you here, but I, I guess I mean I guess people put <laughs> heated ahead, tiles in their people put heated tiles in their kitchen and their bathroom so that their feet don't get cold. Yes, it just it's a more sensitive area than your feet. I'm I think. Well, especially if you're pampering it, it's gonna become that way. Yes, <laughs> I'm a little bit spoiled. I also have the little bidet thing. So yeah, after that. You know, I have the bidet attachment. I have the little heated toilet seat thing. You know. It's only in one toilet in my house, so I might as well not have to because everyone's just going to wait. has to be a serious emergency if anyone's going to use any other toilet. 
See, I have none of this. I called you an animal a few minutes ago. I have none of. <laughs> I have none of these things. I have a regular non-electric toilet seat, and not, nothing. Nothing that's squirting out of it at any time. But we're so behind on toilets. We're so behind. Toilets haven't changed in the last hundred or so. Like, well, maybe not hundred, but last fifty years. Has there been any changes since when you were a child to toilets? No, they still just flush. That's comforting. You know, if you go, no, if you go to Korea, they have they have toilet seats that self clean, that you know, scent powder, air dry, um, you know. I've been to Japan. You might as well sit on a beautician. Well, in, in, I don't know about the, the like in Japan. I, I do know in Korea they have some of the most fabulous self cleaning. You don't have to do anything. Warm water rinse toilet seats that are beautiful as they are useful. Samsung Galaxy toilet seat. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so it's you know the three seashells. It's amazing. Are these connected toilet seats? Do these report back to my phone about my progress? Uh, that that might be too creepy for me. <laughs> I don't. I think that might be too much information. I don't want the NSA to know that much information about me. Now I know <laughs> friend of the show Lex Friedman is a huge bidet proponent and has been proselytizing them across North America. So it sounds Love like it. you you are part of the same crusade. I am. I am. It's it's absolutely. Uh, different and people often say to me, "Why? Why would you do that?" And I'd say, "Well, if you um, okay, I'll ask you the question, Renee. If you were cleaning up dog poop and you, some got on your finger, would you just use a tissue and wipe it off?" This is the most horrible show ever. Now I'm not going to sleep. No, uh, no, of course <laughs> not. I would put my hand in an autoclave. Right. You would wash, scrub, clean. So I think that you know, our posteriors deserve the same type of treatment. Uh, we're gonna be I think it's so more civilized. <laughs> it's more so. It's uh, yeah. It's almost positively Roman. You've got a little robot taking care of you. Yes, exactly. All right. Um, I'm gonna move from the bathroom to the kitchen, Georgia. Okay. So I know I've shown these before, but they're worth showing again. These are global knives. I have a whole set of these. They are amazing. If I had to serve up an as guardian for dinner, or serve as guardians <laughs> for dinner. These knives could fillet them or, you know, the, uh, I forget what Thor called that creature, Mil Bilge Snipe, they could, yeah, this could give Bilge Snipe Tartar at our next visit. I love them because they're one single piece of steel, you don't have to worry about the handle breaking or, or falling off. Uh, they also, you know, the, the pattern here looks like something from the front of a cheese grater Mac, so that's pretty awesome. But they are just so sharp, they cut so well. Um, a lot of time, you know, cooking is about a couple things. Cooking is about cutting and about heat. Um, and being able to just cut things effortlessly. Um, I, I'm an okay cook. You know, I can follow directions. I can put things together. But I'm not a confident cook, and I make a lot mm -hmm. of mistakes, and I forget things. And not having to worry about, you know, cutting something wrong or, or not having a sharp knife or cutting myself, you know, because something slipped because the knife wasn't sharp. All of that kind of scares me in the kitchen. And because I have a whole set of these things, I even have the steak knives for them, I, it's one less thing I have to worry about. Super, super well made, beautiful to look at. I got them on sale. I got them on a Boxing Day sale, which is like wow. a Black Friday sale in the U.S. So they weren't even that expensive. And every once in a while, like every couple of years, I add another piece if I need it. But uh, I, I said this on a previous show, I'm into buying better things now. I used to buy really cheap things. They'd break quickly. I'd have to buy them again. Ended up not being that cheap, and I'd still have a bad quality thing. So right. I'm spending a little bit more money, but I'm spending it less often, and I'm loads happier. Uh, and these knives, I went to get sushi today. Uh, Kevin Michaluk, another friend of the show, says he was going for sushi. So made me hungry. I ran out. I got sushi. You know what the sushi chefs were using? Global knives. Global knives, baby. <laughs> Right, and people are often worried. They say that you know they don't want to hurt themselves with a sharper knife, which is a little bit of a misnomer, right? Well, I mean, you have to exercise the same kinds of caution to exercise with any bladed instrument, Georgia. Thank you for asking. You've got to fold your fingers up. You got to make sure you keep them out of harm's way. But because the knife is going where you want it to go, because it's not dull, it's not sliding, uh, it's not you know forcing you to use excess well, pressure. That, that it is ends up one being of better. the things that are most dangerous, right? Is that you know if you're using a knife that is, it, there's actually more chance that you will cut yourself if you're using a knife that's more dull. Because if you're cutting a tomato, or as I once did, cutting a potato, and it slides off of the potato because the knife blade is not exceptionally sharp, it's not going to stay where you wanted it to. Also, you're going to have to use a lot more force. 
and there's an increased chance that the knife is going to slip because of that. So you're using a sharper knife. It is safer. It's going to stay where you place it, and you're going to be able to cut with less effort. Brilliant. Brilliant, I tell you. <laughs> what else have you got for us? Okay. So I know these... Uh, I'm going to show right behind me a lot of people ask what are the lights that I use to light the back of the podcast room. And the lights that I'm using, these are the Hue light strips. From Philips. I love them. Pardon me? From Philips. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I'm, they're not... <laughs> sponsor me. Um, they're, they're really nice in that I can change the color. So every show I can change the color of what they are. And these are really cool. I'll just... Let me see if I can reach. Yes. In that... They, they just, there we go, we can kind of see it, there we go, they stick, they stick to the back, so nice. it's really nice, they stick to the back, they have a multitude of colors, they don't take up a lot of space, and so I can change it every podcast if I want to, and they give a really nice glowy effect to them, which I love. So I use them all over the house. You can have them turn on at dusk and turn off at another time. A lot of people use them as a natural alarm, so they don't have to use an alarm clock to wake themselves up. They just have their lights slowly come on, and you can have them come on to be whatever color you want. I also, uh, as we spoke before, if I'm watching a show, I will have my lighting to be, you know, if I'm watching, say, uh, Game of Thrones, I'll make it kind of a dark, reddy, purple look so that I really can get into the show. I did that for Star it. Wars last week. I made a Tatooine dusk. Nice. And you can even take, like, you know, music art and your lights can change to be the, uh, to, to deal with the pattern of the music. So if you're doing a dance party, your lights can be flickering and playing and you don't know, need to have a full light system in order to make some really nice, cool lighting effects that you have. And they're affordable and a lot of fun to do. And you can control them on your phone or on your computer, you know, iPad, whatever it might be. Or yeah, other they have an app. I believe they have apps for iOS and Android, and they also have a web app. That you can also go on the web uh, if you want to sign up with an account with them and control them remotely from anywhere in the world. And what I really like is behind me, I have Hue lights too. So, for example, right. I can turn them off. Now they go, and I can turn them back on. And I can change and you can the colors. Change them the colors. Yeah, and I have them through my house. I, these, uh, these are the Hue, uh, I forget the name, these are the large ones Blooms? behind me. The Looms, yeah. Blooms? Blooms, yeah. I'll have one right here, one second. Those are the Hue Blooms. I have the regular Hue light bulbs in the rest of my house. I have in my kitchen. I have them in my living room. I have them in my hallway. Okay. Uh, and they're just fabulous. I cannot bring my bloom there. It's a little bit... Wait, we can do it like this. There and we go. Uh, there we go. So this is the bloom. It looks like this, and it's a spotlight. So it can light up the back of something. It changes to all the different colors, and so it's really nice. Just gonna yeah, it doesn't go the pure white the way that the regular light bulb does, but for something like I'm using for an accent or Georgia's using. Also, the ones that you're using, Georgia, the, the Hue strips, some people use them in home theaters to try to replicate that sort of cool movie studio look. Yes, and it works really nicely. You yeah, can, you can use the too. light strips also. It's just nice because you can put them as an accent underneath things. You can put them for, uh, we have them underneath, the stairs, so that people know where they're walking, and you know they're not. I would I would love if they made them so that they were movement sensitive, so they could turn on and off as you go. Let's hold our fingers crossed for what that might be for later. All right, so I've got another one for you. Please. Now um, you can see behind me I have a large Lego set. It is the Lego Batman Arkham Asylum. That is an amazing set, Renee. It it's a really really cool set. It is too big for me to move, but I can bring a part of something here. So here, for example... Can you bring the camera closer to you? I'm bringing this here. This is the Batmobile part of it. And these don't come built, of course. These come as a bunch of Lego bricks. And this has got Batman and Batgirl on it. And you can build them. And I have, uh, in the background there, it's one set, but I, I bought a lot of other sets in order to get all the little people like Joker and Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy and Two-Face and Killer Croc and... Nightwing and Robin and Damian Wayne and all that, but it's fun for several reasons. First, the, uh, Lego and Batman are two amazing things, and they're just better together. They're like, they're like you know peanut butter and chocolate. But also, building something is very cathartic. I spend a lot of time in front of a computer, um, and yeah, I could play a video game, but then I'm in front of a screen again. 
And just having something simple like Lego, um, you can put it together. It detaches you from this world, lets you do something that you know uses your hands, uses your eyes, but not in an electronic way. I also have two little godchildren, love Lego, and I can, uh, I can, I can build stuff with them, and they're phenomenal at building this kind of stuff. Even at, at eight and five years old, they can build like nobody's business, and that's something that you can do together, you know, with with uh, family, with friends. It's just a great activity. And Lego, if you don't like Batman, they have Star Wars, they have Teenage Ninja Mutant Turtles, they have Back to the Future, and they have their own stuff, like the Lego movie stuff and the castle stuff, and and they have al almost anything for any taste uh, you can imagine. Lego Friends, Lego whatever. Um, and uh, again, there's just something so nice about building something and seeing it grow in front of you out of the scattering of bricks into something recognizable. Um, there's a designer I know who loves this kind of stuff. He buys the really hard ones, the Lego architecture stuff, which is like the Eiffel Tower or uh, uh, the Sydney Opera House, uh, or just the architecture bricks, which are white bricks, and you can build almost any architectural structure from them. It's there, there really is a ton of really cool stuff there, and it's worth, if you are a geek and you do like this kind of stuff, it's definitely worth checking out. I have to say, they're also doing an amazing marketing pull with the movies and everything else. Uh, and Legos are great for your brain as well. Build up visual spatial memory, great for stress relief, great to do something relaxing. And it does help you think about how will something be you know, in the future as you deal with it and to be able to take the patience and time to read the directions, see what's happening, and then build. Or, of course, you can build something fun on your own. Yeah, and there's there's not that many companies in the world that really focus on delight. I mean, you know, you can say Apple or, or or one of the other smartphone companies, Nokia, whatever, focuses on making delightful design. But it's not common in the industries. Disney absolutely does it. Disney's fantastic at it. I think Lego is another one of those companies. So if you appreciate sort of amazingly built, amazingly put together products that are put that are deeply thought about and deeply considered, then I think you'll appreciate this. It was funny because I was. Uh... You know, they, they talk about companies that really care about making something and making it properly. I, I thought to myself, you know what, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'll buy, like, you know, the cheap, not Lego, Lego pieces, and no one, and they're like, really, is anyone going to matter? Is it going to matter? And it was amazing. The pieces themselves did not, and this is not mixing one brand with another brand, but, you know, I think it's like, what, to 0 0.002 microns or something. Each piece in Lego is made sure that they would fit together. The manufacturing so had, tolerances, yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. The, um, the knockoff bricks, they didn't, they would pop off. Like, it was so frustrating because you'd put the bricks together and slowly they would just be working their way out. And I thought, you know what, there are some things that are worthwhile to buy the real thing because they've just spent so much more time working out the bugs and, and figuring it out and they know that this is going to work. And especially if you're young, that can be really frustrating, especially if you're building a very large piece. If two of the pieces do not fit perfectly together, and you only have one of them, it kind of leaves you stuck there. So, you know, I I think that there's a lot of things that you don't have to buy the name brand, but, you know, there might be some other ones out that they're really exceptionally made, but I have to say, I'm yeah, Lego's amazing. I don't want to get off on too much of a tangent, but there was a really interesting, um, I forget, maybe Gruber linked to it this week, but it was a, a quote from Johnny Ive where he said that, um, if you don't specifically choose something, if you don't make a strong choice, like why is the why is this the, this this object made out of this material? Then it's haphazard. It's meaningless. Uh, your job is to make those decisions, and that's sort of the thing I feel here. You can take it to extremes. Like there's a story about Steve Jobs not buying for, furniture for ten years because he and his wife were going, "What's the nature of a sofa? What's its purpose? What's its intent?" So I mean, there's absolutely extremes you can take it to, but just having like whether it's these knives, like these knives feel really well considered to me. Lego feels really well considered to me. The AeroPress, it, it's plastic. It's not made out of aluminum and glass and, and, and metal. It's made out of plastic, but it's just so well considered. Like, the person who built it, knew, it, it is the design of it serves the purpose of it, and that's the kind of stuff I love. Also, it's a labor of love. It's someone that really thought about their product and how it's going to be made, how it's going to be used, and, you know, cared about that themselves. So it makes a huge difference for that. All right, George, we have time for about one more. What do you got for us? Okay, so I have one more thing, and I, you know, I'm going to like try to do this without dropping everything and move all Please of my... Please don't kill anybody. I'm going to try not to. I'm going to try not to. I'm going to try to move all of my mess, coffee and everything, so I can show it. So um, 
I like to have cool, relaxing things. And so when I made my office, I, you know, became a psychotherapist. I said, I'm going to have some really neat things. So one thing I have is a pendulum. I don't have my pendulum here, though. I love my pendulum. Uh, it's just white sand. It moves. But I do have an ionizer fountain, which is kind of neat, and it leaves smoke. So I'm going to see if I can lift it up without... An ionizer fountain. Yes. Ionizer is that like fountain. a flux capacitor? Kind of like a flux capacitor. I'm going to move camera down a little bit so that you can see worried. her. I hope it don't drop it. It's glass. There we go. Wow. Okay, now if you can see it, it has, it's hard because of the, I'm going to go behind it because the background is white and you want, you won't be able to see the smoke that comes off of it. But it it just looks like has, a big white bowl with smoke coming out of it. it has a little, it's a big white bowl. It has LEDs inside, so it also changes colors. It's really relaxing, and it has little smoke. I'll just blow the smoke out. And the smoke kind of comes off, and it's really relaxing and, and somewhat mesmerizing. Now, it's not smoke. It's water. It's ionized water, so you're also humidifying your area at the same time. And I think it gives a really neat effect. So you can buy all kinds of different fountains that have these. So I'm going to put it down so I don't break it. Or you. Or me. There we go. But I, I love it. I just think that it's really relaxing and calm. I did find that some people did not like it. They found it to be, there we go. Some people did not like it. They found it to be a little bit disconcerting and distracting. So I don't really use it, and the base was not very strong. That came with the fountain itself. But you can buy all kinds of them, and I like LED lights and colors that change. And the the it's not you know not the smoke, but the nice water vapor that you know comes off of it was really cool. So it's having like having a little bit of a cloud inside of your house. So what is what does this do for you, George? Is it just this sort of sensory interest of it? It, it? Like the different colors, the smoke, it sort of relaxes you? It's soothing. That's one thing is it's very soothing and relaxing. It's also humidifying, so it is wonderful for keeping your air hydrated, and it's fun. Besides that, it does nothing else but that, and unfortunately I already busted one of the ionizers. The ionizers oh, I'm sure. themselves... You can. They're just. They're just little tiny metal pieces, and I left it on at my office all weekend and forgot to turn it off, and it it burned the unit with it. So I had to get a new one. But luckily, um, I have a whole bunch. Of them, so I now see if you if finished. it was a smart bowl or you had attached it to one of those smart plugs, you could have used your phone to to signal it and turn it off automatically from wherever you were. Oh, that is so true. Yes. Or turn it on and freak someone out. Yeah. Yes. Both those things are true, Georgia. Both those things are true. It's kind of it kind of looks if if for those of you that are not watching uh, the video, it kind of looks like a dry ice effect. It stays low, and only once it moves over, it, it kind of flows over the bowl and then and then down onto the ground next to it. So it's kind of cool that way. Now before we end, I just like for for people who are watching, going, what is this? They're just telling us about stuff the whole show. They're not you know, helping me with anxiety or stress or, or living a better life. How do these things do that? I, they, obviously, I feel they're not frivolous, but I don't know why they add to the benefit. They, I, I absolutely believe they add to the benefit of my life, but why, why do objects and why do things like this help us? Well, all of these things are just making my life more effortless and enjoying it, and I'll kind of go through all of them. So what I love about the You Guard Me sticker that goes onto my phone is it allows me to look at my phone and still keep my eyes on the road at the same time, so I don't have to look down at my phone to see where I'm going. Plus, it's hands-free. My hands can stay on the steering wheel, so I'm so much safer than I would have been if I'm holding my phone or if my phone is in my lap or if I have to look to the side because it's somewhere on the dash. Can I tell you a funny story? Please. So I, I feel the stress because I was I had to drive to Ottawa last week for the NS North conference, and I was using Google Maps because I've come accustomed to using Google Maps, and I was holding it in my hand because I don't have the sticker, and I, mm -hmm. I usually don't even look at it. I use the voice directions, but it kept saying uh, exit at such and such road. It didn't exist. That road did not exist. <laughs> the roads that were there had not that name, and because it didn't give you the number of the exit, there was no way of figuring it out. And also the GPS was off because it kept thinking it was on the... The, the access ramp when I was on the road or the road was on the access ramp. 
and it, it caused me an incredible amount of stress, and I had to look at it. I even had to pull over a couple times. And, you know, shame on you, Google, for not including the number of an exit or a highway or something along with the description because your descriptions are useless. But um, if I didn't have to continue to look down at my hand and worry about the road at the same time, I, I would have been far less stressed in that situation. Exactly, exactly. For the Sonicare toothbrush, I brush my teeth better, more effectively. I have less plaque on my teeth, hence I will have cleaner teeth, less chance of cavities. It will eventually save me a ton of money in dentist fees, which are exorbitant. And it's a nice feeling to have my teeth exceptionally clean. So that's why I love that. And then for the Hulites, it's just nice to be able to use something that's not going to be an alarm clock. I can control it from anywhere in my house if I travel. The lights can turn on and off at certain times on their own, so I don't have to worry about that. And it's it's really nice to do a cool effect. It can do a lot of different things in one. It's also exceptionally energy efficient and beautiful. You can make whatever colors you so desire, you know, on the same bulb that you're using as a regular light bulb. Can I try a sort of a Zen and Tech test to see if I've been listening to you for the last, you know, many shows? Please. So what I've got out of this so far is, and we've done episodes on this, uh, some of these declutter, they let you take the burden of having to remember to do stuff and sort of put it on the technology so you can take off that cognitive load and just enjoy your life a little better. And the other stuff, either it makes you smile or it gives you a moment of delight. And we've also done shows on the importance of having that sort of, because uh, smiling and, and doing all this stuff, it, it's the opposite of being stressed and anxious and all that kind of thing. So have, have I been listening okay? I think you've been listening great. You said it perfectly. Yay. All right, Georgia. So if people, we're going to put all the links for all of this stuff in the show notes, but I would really like people to write in. Use Zenintech at MobileNations.com. Leave a comment on the post beneath this video and, and tell us the kind of stuff that brings delight or to their lives or makes their lives easier. I would love to know. I love tech. So just, yeah, send in all of your ideas, suggestions. What should we be trying out? What makes your life better? And then we can help spread it on for other people to know as well. Yeah, well, the the coolest ones we will we will mention on air. That sounds great. All right, George. If people are interested in you and stuff that you work on, um, or if they want to follow you on Twitter or the socials, where can they go? Okay, you can find me on more.com. You can also follow the show, of course, and in Techmon, follow us, subscribe. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's Georgia underscore Dow D O W. Nice, and you can find me at Renee Ritchie on Twitter. You can find me at Mobile Nations and all the different Mobile Nations uh, sites. And I want to thank our sponsor, um, Squarespace. They're our first sponsor on the show. Woohoo! Yeah. Uh, and this episode was brought to you by them. They are the all in one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, online store. For a free trial and 10% off, visit squarespace.com slash zen or enter uh, offer code zen, Z E N, at checkout. Um, a better website starts with you, and along with the theme of this show, it takes the burden of making a great website off of you and lets Squarespace do all the heavy lifting. Next time, Georgia? Next time, Renee. Thanks. Thank you, and thank you, everyone, for watching and or listening. Please subscribe. See you next week. Bye.